What's up guys, today's video is on the Nikon Z50 Review 2023. The Nikon Z50 brings Nikon's mirrorless camera technology to the hobbyist market. Nikon's full-frame mirrorless cameras might be tempting, but not everyone can afford them. Nikon's first stab at producing interchangeable lens mirrorless cameras didn't exactly set the world on fire. The 1 Series relatively small, low-resolution 1-inch CX sensor with a 2. 7x crop factor quickly fell behind its mirrorless rivals. The solution was the Z-mount, which was introduced in late 2018 and so arrived somewhat late to the mirrorless party. But if you're going to turn up late, you're going to have to make quite an entrance, and the Nikon Z50 has certainly done that. With the revolutionary Z-mount in Nikon mirrorless cameras, the company rethought its lens mount from the ground up. The first two models, the full-frame Nikon Z7 and Z6, really showcase this cutting-edge tech, with range of S-line lenses that are amongst the sharpest we've ever tested. This qualifies Nikon's Z cameras as amongst the best mirrorless cameras you can buy, but they come at a hefty price. Now, a shade over a year since the launch of the Z-mount, Nikon brought out its first more affordable mirrorless Z-mount model, and it already looks like one of the best Nikon cameras for hobbyists and enthusiasts, or it would if there were just a few more lenses to go with it. Much of this cost saving is due to the Z50 using an APS CDX size sensor, as used in its range of DSLRs from enthusiast down to entry level. And this has enabled the camera to launch with a price tag well under $1,000 divided by £1,000. This DX body is fitted with the same Z mount used on the full frame models, so full frame Z lenses can be mounted directly onto the Z50. Using the same FTZ adapter, existing DX and FX lenses for DSLRs can be used on the Z52. That's actually just as well, because even in the middle of 2021, months after its launch, there are only two native DX lenses. If you want a super wide angle, for example, the only option right now is a Nikon DSLR lens and the FTZ adapter, not ideal. One of the biggest selling points of the Nikon Z50 is how light and compact it is, but you can't truly appreciate these qualities until you're actually shooting with it. We took the Nikon Z50 around Bath City Center on a busy Saturday afternoon, and it was a pleasure to shoot with. It easily slipped into a small messenger bag, which meant we didn't have to mess around with a proper camera bag for a casual trip out. However, despite its diminutive and unassuming size, the Nikon Z50 is capable of much more than just travel and holiday snaps. The Z50 was perfectly suited to a run-and-gun shooting style as we captured quick snaps in the bustling city center, with a small and non-threatening profile. Plus the incredibly useful tilting touchscreen LCD the Nikon Z50 is perfectly suited to street photography. But photography isn't the Z50's only strong point, with the ability to capture uncropped 4 Kelvin video. Nikon has positioned the Z50 as a strong contender for the attention of the rapidly growing, lucrative vlogger, influencer market. We tested out the Nikon Z50's video functionality and were pleased with the results, including the focus peaking feature, which works just as well as it does on the Nikon Z7. One of the criticisms with the Z50 is that the LCD touchscreen tilts downwards, which prevents users from being able to mount the camera on a tripod as they vlog. However, if a vlogging camera's screen doesn't articulate out sideways, it's caught in a bit of a catch-22 between getting in the way of either a microphone or a tripod, while it would have been nice for the Z50's screen to articulate sideways. The Nikon Z50 is so incredibly light that a gimbal or mini tripod grip isn't really essential. While high-end professional vloggers might want to give this one a miss, we could see the Z50 proving very popular with influencers who aren't overly fussed about hyper-smooth footage, despite the fact that we were shooting in JPEG on an incredibly grey and overcast day. We were able to get plenty of detail out of the Nikon Z50's files without compromising image quality. We also tried shooting indoors, using only window light. The Z50 worked well here as well, with the tilting screen and 16-50mm kit lens working in perfect harmony to capture top-down shots. Another thought that struck us as we were testing the Nikon Z50 was that other enthusiast-level mirrorless cameras are often beautifully designed, but can fall short when it comes to being used over long periods of time. A boxy design can be very pretty aesthetically, but not so useful when it comes to shooting. The ergonomic design of the Nikon Z50 was another aspect of the camera that could only be appreciated after an extended period of use. With the deep grip paired with the 16-50mm kit lens, the Z50 is perfectly balanced. Technically, the Z50 might sound like a scaled-down version of the Nikon Z62 and Z72, but in the flesh it has a very different feel. Nikon has done a remarkable job of giving such a small camera such a solid one-handed grip. But quite apart from the size of the camera, we were impressed by the 16 to 50 mm pancake kit lens, which is one of the slimmest APS-C kit lenses we've yet seen and uses a proper mechanical zoom rather than an electrical power zoom system. These always feel rather disconnected. 
But there are still three things to think about. One is that the Nikon Z5 isn't that much bigger or more expensive. Another is the relative lack of DX lenses for the Z50 right now. And the third is that the Nikon ZFC has just been announced, with a beautiful retro design that does leave the Z50 looking distinctly plain. Even so, we are impressed by Nikon's pricing. Body only, the Z50 costs less than some of its chief APS-C rivals, and the pricing for the kit lens and twin lens bundles is really quite remarkable. We were happy with the image and video quality produced by the Nikon Z50, and genuinely enjoyed zipping around the back streets of Bath capturing quick snapshots with this dinky little camera. Overall, we think this is a fantastic enthusiast mirrorless camera, and proves that Nikon has a clear vision for its Z-mount cameras. Key features The smaller physical sensor size isn't the only place where savings have been made. This model doesn't feature in-body image stabilization, so the lenses that launch with the new model have Nikon's vibration reduction built in. But otherwise, the specs are truly impressive. The 20.9 MPDX format sensor borrows the fast, wide hybrid AF system from Nikon's full-frame Z cameras, with 209 AF points covering 90% of the sensor width and height. Its 11 FPS continuous shooting range almost matches the Z6, and certainly puts it up amongst the fastest shooters around matching many pro-level DSLRs. It's a great low-light performer too, with a native ISO range of ISO 150 1200 at up to 4 EV, and the Z50 is great for video, shooting 4 Kelvin across the full sensor width, rather than a cropped version that some rivals have employed. 4 Kelvin time-lapse sequences can be created in camera, while shooting in full HD adds additional slow-motion footage mode. The Z50 also features an electronic viewfinder. It's lower resolution than its full-frame cousins at 2.36 million dots rather than 3.6 million, but we found it to be sharp and with few signs of the lag that have plagued some of Nikon's competitors. Electronic viewfinders do take a little getting used to, but once you do, seeing the effect of your exposure settings through the viewfinder before you take the shot is nothing short of brilliant. A tilting 1.04 million dot touchscreen flips by 180 degrees to sit below the camera body and is primarily designed for selfies and vlogging use. Nikon sees a large part of its target market to be influencers who use platforms such as Instagram and YouTube to share content. This does mean that the screen would be obscured when used in this way if the camera were mounted on a tripod. But Nikon has hinted that a solution to this is in the works. It's worth pointing out that Sony's brand new ZV-E10 vlogging camera does have a VARI angle screen, and is a good deal cheaper than the Z50. The Nikon does have a viewfinder and it's a much more rounded stills plus video camera, but still, build and handling. In all, it feels very much part of the existing Z family, but even smaller. If the Nikon Z7 is the mirrorless equivalent of the D850 Pro full-frame DSLR and the Z6 the D750 enthusiast full-frame model, then the Z50 is roughly on par with the Nikon D7500 as an enthusiast APS-C camera. And Nikon has hinted that we can further expect to see even lower-cost mirrorless entry-level models released in the fullness of time to fit alongside the Nikon D5600 and D3500. But then the Nikon Z50 doesn't just face competition from the Z62 and Z72, there's also the Nikon Z5. It's cheaper than both, and while it's bigger and more expensive than the Z50, it's a huge margin, and the Z5 could tempt a lot of people with its ready-made full-frame Nikkor Z lens range. Verdict. Technically, the Z50 might sound like a scaled-down version of the Nikon Z62 and Z72, but in the flesh it has a very different feel. Nikon has done a remarkable job of giving such a small camera such a solid one-handed grip, but quite apart from the size of the camera, we were impressed by the 16-50mm pancake kit lens which is one of the slimmest APS-C kit lenses we've yet seen and uses a proper mechanical zoom rather than an electrical power zoom system. These always feel rather disconnected, but there are still three things to think about. One is that the Nikon Z5 isn't that much bigger or more expensive. Another is the relative lack of DX lenses for the Z50 right now. And the third is that the Nikon ZFC has just been announced, with a beautiful retro design that does leave the Z50 looking distinctly plain. Pros Compact size and handling 4 Kelvin video 11 FPS continuous shooting Super slim pancake kit lens Cons Single as ISD card slot 300 shot battery life Awkward flip under selfie screen Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you have something to say, please leave a comment.